What's going on everybody? In today's video, what are we doing? And what are we talking about? So, today I decided uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the Neo Geo Pocket development kit that I got. Before we dive into that, I want to uh, give highlight to the two uh, development kits and the hardware that I have on display here today. So, over here, uh, I've got some uh, Sony PlayStation 1 uh, development hardware uh, that I recently acquired through a buddy. So it's not a complete kit and uh, there's lots of different components here, but uh, I am working on completing this. And of course, this will lead to uh, future content here on the channel and I'll be able uh, to demo some of this hardware for you guys. So all this development gear here is for the PlayStation 1. Pretty cool. And now on this side of the room, we have my Intelligent Systems Twilight Debugger, or TWL Debugger Unit. And so this was for the Nintendo DS, uh, but it also supported the DSi model and had some specific functions for the DSi. So it's essentially a DS capture unit as well. Uh, it has both of those features uh, enabled, but it is primarily a debugger unit. So pretty awesome and I recently acquired this through a buddy and uh, I'm hoping to be able to get this unit up and running in the future and demo it here for you guys on my channel. So pretty awesome. So today's video, I'm going to be talking about my Neo Geo Pocket development kit. So in the last video, I briefly talked about this and gave you guys a little show and tell. Uh, but uh, this is uh, definitely a project that's going to involve a lot of uh, reverse engineering work. Uh, so that's uh, I want to talk about that a little bit. And this is an ongoing project, uh, but it's super cool. Uh, so I've got a couple of the Neo Geo Pocket uh, handhelds. Uh, this is the color model, but I also have uh, the standard grayscale model, and that's the standard Neo Geo uh, handheld unit. Um, now, what's one of the things that's missing with the unit that I have is a little cartridge interface. So essentially, I have to build uh, a little cartridge uh, with a an interface cable that will then connect to the front uh, of my uh, developer unit. Uh, as well, there's a cartridge uh, socket adapter, and that's a little daughter card that connects to the top uh, PCB uh, of the debugger system. And what that does is it allows us to program uh, special flash cartridges for the system. So there's that, uh, those two little adapters that I'm going to have to build. Uh, so I am starting to look at that. Now, uh, fellow YouTuber Pixben, he, he also has a system uh, exactly like the one I have. And so him and I have been sort of working together on this. And uh, now with, with Pixben, he got the little uh, cartridge uh, socket ad adapter, the little daughter card. He had one of these. And so he was cool enough to send me some photos of the front and back uh, shots of the PCBA. And uh, it looks pretty straightforward uh, in terms of the interface connection. So it shouldn't be too hard uh, for me to build, uh, you know, a small little adapter board uh, that I can then use and, and connect to this top port for that uh, daughter card. And what that does is it allows uh, some software to work with that unit and able to program uh, different memory cartridges that will interface to that daughter card, um, as well as being able to load uh, special bootloaders. So th th there's a lot involved with this unit because that was the unit came with a special uh, bootloader cartridge and that's one of the other pieces of uh, hardware that we are both missing. Pixben and I are, are both lacking that special bootloader cartridge. So we're, we are hoping that someone out there might you know potentially uh, allow us to dump that cartridge if they do have this within their collection. 
and uh, that would provide us with you know further parts of the system and uh, you know allow us to sort of try and do some trial and error work and figure out how this system works so uh, but i have begun to actually reverse engineer the system a little bit and so the first thing i did is take apart the uh, emus debugger and this is the rom emulator unit so as you guys can see here um, there was some firmware stored on a couple of eprom chips and so what i've done is i've used this beast of a machine this is my data io unisite eprom programmer and it's a unit from the 80s and is just a, a real workhorse and i think i have shown this to you guys in one of the uh, uh tour the lab tour uh, videos that i did in the past uh, but again this system is just a rock solid uh unit for programming different types of memory uh, microcontrollers, FPGAs, and CPLDs. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing system, and I've had it for quite a while. Uh, but anyhow, I used the system to dump the uh, EEPROM chips that I had uh, for uh, the EMU's debugger unit. And so I recently got that uh, dumped, and so now uh, the, the plan is, is to take those uh, firmware dump files, these little hex uh, binary files, and we're gonna try and uh, decompile it uh, in IDA Pro and potentially see if we can figure out uh, the program that was written for the EMU's debugger and allowing us to sort of see what functions were put in place for communication to happen uh, over the uh, RS-232 serial port as well as the LPT parallel port. And that connects to the development PC, uh, which is also running some special software. So there's, you know, there's two different pieces of software there that we've got to sort of figure out. And, uh, and if we don't get that, it's a, it's a complete reverse engineering project. So uh, there's debugger software for the Emu's device uh, that we still are lacking. Uh, I have acquired a couple of pieces of software that Pixpin had found online. Uh, so we are still kind of going through that, but that seems to be a lot more of the um, software that you would write for you know part of the uh, neo geo demo that you'd be writing sort of the game file uh, but it does allow us to potentially try and write some software and compile it and save that to uh, one of the uh, flash cartridges that we could use and potentially create our own bootloader so that's something that we're still you know i'm kind of looking at doing that uh, but again the first thing that uh, i'm looking at doing is decompiling the firmware now, the next thing that uh, I wanted to look at was uh, building my own ribbon cables for the system that would then interface from these front ports, like I, as I had mentioned in the last video, and those then interface to the main PCBA of the uh, development kit uh, for this Neo Geo Pocket system. And uh, so, so I just assumed that these would be standard IDC connectors, but as it turns out, uh, these are uh, a special type of 40-pin uh, and 60-pin connector uh, that we do need uh, in order to interface. And the spacing is a little different. Uh, it's a 1.27 millimeter uh, spacing. So they're a little different. It's not the standard, uh, you know, IDC connectors that you get with an ID hard drive, that kind of thing, right? And you have those uh, different headers that you have. So I had to get uh, uh, and find those special connectors. Uh, and that's something that's in the works right now. And I'm gonna be building those cable assemblies. Now, the firmware for this system, uh, it runs specifically on a Toshiba processor, and that is the TMP68301A, and that version of the chip. And it has support for different types of interfaces, uh, like the RS-232 serial interface, as well as the parallel uh, port interface. Uh, connecting to different uh, development PCs that you're going to be interfacing with uh, for programming and just interfacing and being able to communicate with that processor. So that's one of the, the unique features of this model of the processor uh, that this system is using. And so uh, it'll be interesting to see where, uh, you know, what kind of functions are in place and allowing us to communicate with it and then potentially interface to the SRAM and then being able to upload uh, different data uh, that can then be booted on the uh, Neo Geo Pocket handheld. 
So that's pretty awesome and I'm excited to you know, start getting that implemented. But the first thing that needs to be done is to decompile the firmware and uh, see what types of functions are in place. Uh, and allowing communication to happen there. So now depending if the decompile uh, does not uh, come through, uh, it is gonna be a lengthy reverse engineering project because you would essentially have to create your own schematic to have the full you know, understanding of how the hardware is interfaced to the CPU processor, and then essentially going and creating your own uh, firmware for that Toshiba processor, and then writing your own functions in order to communicate with uh, the different interface ports, uh, that being the RS-232 serial port, as well as the parallel port, uh, and then communicating with the header connections, which uh, essentially are uh, emulating the ROM memory uh, on the, the Neo Geo Pocket. And then that gets interfaced to the uh, little cartridge adapter that you build, and then you're essentially loading that uh, information into the handheld unit to boot uh, as a game or a demo. So that's you know pretty involved. So I'm I'm optimistic that the decompile will come through, and then we'll be able to sort of see what functions uh, are in place uh, to be able to write some software on a development PC to then communicate and upload some data into the SRAM. That would be the first step uh, that I would try. And uh, I think uh, you know uh, implementing debugging features that would be a whole other project on its own. But uh, it would be cool to at least demo the system and being able to load. Uh, a small little demo uh, into the SRAM of the system and then booting it on uh, the Neo Geo Pocket handheld. That would be the cool thing to do and try and be able to demo here on my channel for you guys. So that is the goal and I'm optimistic that in time we will be able to get that up and running for you. Now something really cool that I came across while I was doing research on this debugger was uh, the official SNK programming system uh, for the Neo Geo Pocket cartridges. So uh, now again, there's not a lot of information out there, but uh, when I came across the photos for this, um, I was like, wow, this is really unusual, but very cool. Uh, and it has the official SNK logo uh, on these boards, as you guys can see. And so you essentially have two pieces of hardware here. You have the main board, uh, which has the uh, SNK logo and the part number uh, NGPE-SO and uh, this system uh, would interface to a secondary um, ISA card that would then get inserted into a development PC and uh, it had the part number uh, NGPE-ISA and so there as you can see there's a couple of IDC connectors on both of these boards and so then you would essentially connect them together using an IDC ribbon cable and then uh, you would likely have some special software that you would run on the development PC that would enable you to uh, program uh, ROMs under test uh, onto the Neo Geo Pocket cartridges. So pretty awesome, pretty cool, and I'm not sure how many people have actually seen this out there, but uh, as soon as I saw it, I thought, wow, this is kind of neat. And it was on a Japanese website that had this unit up for sale at one point. Um, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys that because it's pretty unusual. Now, the other thing I, I was talking with different people online about this and these, uh, the retail cartridges for the Neo Geo Pocket, uh, they contained uh, a proprietary SNK brand of memory, a memory chip that's in there. Now, um, you know, reading through the manuals and talking with different people online, it, it was sort of suggested that this is actually a flash chip and what SNK did was they uh, put in place uh, a special register uh, on the flash chip uh, or essentially like a fuse that was one time programmable. And so with the software, they could go, then go and activate that register, blow the fuse essentially. And what that would do is it would put a, a memory protection uh, to you know, certain areas of memory or you know, the entire cartridge possibly and it would essentially protect that memory and prevent it from being rewritten um, and it essentially no longer being a flash memory device. It would be acting as a ROM memory or a read-only memory. So pretty awesome. And um, again, uh, just something really unusual that I came across. And you know, now, you know, I'm still thinking that the unit that we have here, uh, the Neo Geo Pocket Development Kit, that it also has the ability uh, to write cartridges 
um, the same way that this official SNK unit uh, would potentially have the capability of doing. Now it'll be interesting to see uh, where this leads in actually getting the Toshiba firmware to decompile and be able to see what types of functions were put in place, uh, you know, and possibly see if there was uh, the option of uh, programming uh, the uh, cartridges for this uh, Neo Geo Pocket. And so if that's the case, it's possible that the firmware contains the programming algorithms uh, that were used to program these cartridges. So that would be something interesting to see and um, you know, be able to see what the different uh, functions are available. So pretty awesome. So that's today's video guys, uh, again, just wanted to you know bring everybody up to speed on this uh, ongoing uh, project to get the Neo Geo Pocket development kit up and running and uh, you know the ongoing uh, reverse engineering work that's happening. So we got the firmware that we're decompiling and uh, as well building some uh, interface cables uh, and as well the cartridge uh, socket adapter. And I'm, you know, I might elaborate a little further in another video where, you know, I'll be actually writing uh, some, uh, you know, some software like a demo file that we could use and program it onto a flash cartridge uh, to use as a bootloader for this system. So that might be the next step uh, after getting the uh, firmware to decompile. Uh, but it'll be cool to, you know, keep you guys up to speed and you guys can follow along with the development work that is happening uh, with this project. So pretty awesome, loads of fun. So I want to give a big shout out to my supporters. You guys are amazing. And for those of you that are interested in becoming a supporter, please visit my website. And that is behindthecode.ca and think about becoming a supporter here at Behind the Code with Jerry. So thanks again for watching everybody. Hit the like and subscribe if you can. It is always appreciated. And we will see you in the next video. Take it easy and bye for now. Ciao.